Hey, good morning, this is Tom. Apologies for the bad video, bad audio quality. I get it, it's on my phone, but listen, this is important. Don't have the time to make a full video. Look, the Israeli dilemma right now in Rafa is absolutely insane. They have five things they're considering right now. On the one hand, Rafa, which is that region in the bottom side of Gaza Strip, the one that's bordering with Egypt. On the one hand, that's the only place that Hamas still has. That's the last stronghold of Hamas. They have four brigades over there, Unless they are taken care of by the Israelis, Hamas survives this war. So the Israelis have no chance but to go in there. Essentially, if the Israelis stop now, it's like taking antibiotics, have the prescribed time for four days and just basically stopping there. The sickness is going to come back way, way worse. So on the one hand, the Israelis have to go to Rafah if they want Hamas dead. On the other hand, the IDF is not super excited about this because the Israelis are saying, look, there's 1.2 million people over there. How in the hell are we going to wage warfare in this urban environment with hostages and tunnels and 1.2 million people in tents? It's insanely complicated. On the third hand, this is the Ramadan month, which means there's going to be consequences to waging war in a highly dense populated region during the month of Ramadan, which is explosive emotionally. It's a charged time for Muslims in general specifically, uh, and it will play into the hands of Yahya Sinwar and Hamas because they want that explosion in the Ramadan month to ignite the entire region against Israel. On the other hand, the U.S. is basically trying to stop Israel, trying to break this whole thing, saying, hey, hold on, you're not allowed to go to Rafah, don't do it, and you have to stop the war, and you certainly don't do this in the middle of Ramadan because it's going to ignite the whole region. So, number one, not in Ramadan. Number two, probably not in Rafah unless we figure out how to move 1.2 million people out of there so we don't have high civilian casualties. So, the U.S. is on the one hand pressuring Israel not to do it. The military understands it's going to be a complicated mission. The politicians understand they have to get rid of the Hamas. And it's the middle of the Ramadan month, which is a complexity of its own. Um, and on top of this whole thing, the Egyptians are saying, look, guys, if you go and wage warfare there, there's going to be 1.2 million Palestinians who's going to break the border and going to run towards Egypt. We don't want them on our land. We don't want Hamas on our land. So what are you guys doing here? The Egyptians are terrified of Hamas. They're terrified of getting 1 million Palestinians crossing the border. So the Egyptians are saying, no way, Jose, don't do it. So this is a whole complex situation for the Israelis. This is a massive, massive dilemma. Uh, the one thing I'll say here is that the United States is in the pickle here because, look, right now, um, the United States is hated around the world by Muslims, by people who are pro-Arab, uh, pro pro-Palestinian, pro-Hamas, whatever you want to call it, by being too uh, pro-Israel. On the other hand, uh, people in Israel are basically saying, well, you know, the Israelis are like, well, the United States isn't helping us enough. I mean, they have to understand how we see things. So the Israelis expect the United States to see things from their perspective. The pro-Arab people, pro-Palestinians, they want the United States to see things from their perspective, and they're in the bind. And the one thing I'll say for the Israelis is uh, uh, they have to understand that they don't have a better friend. I mean, they, at this point, they don't have a lot of friends left, not in the region, not globally, especially not powerful friends. So they have to play it smart. It, it, the, the United States does not completely un understand correctly the Middle East. They've made a lot of policy mistakes, definitely, but... The Israelis don't have another friend, so they have to make it work with the U.S. despite the bad policy decisions as the Israelis perceive them. So that's a relationship that has to be managed smartly and not, um, not in a political way. But basically, we'll see what happens. Pay attention to the northern border. The Hezbollah-Israeli strikes are intensifying. Over the past three days, Hezbollah launched 100 rockets into Israel. The Israelis struck about seven miles from Beirut, which is the deepest they've struck so far. So that whole thing is heating up and that might actually ignite during Ramadan. We'll see. But in any case, that's kind of my update. I'll see you in the next one real quick.